Hey, everybody. I'm David Mariner, and I'm the Executive Director of Camp for Hovis. Welcome to Camp for Hovis. Um, is anyone here for the first time? Excellent. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Red Clay School District representing over there. Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge um, you're going to hear from our one of our founders, Murray, a little bit later. We also have one of our board members with us, David Garrett. Do you want to just raise your hand? Um, and we have two amazing staff with us tonight. Maddie, who's our operations administrator, and Amber, who's with HIV testing and counseling. So um, you can read more about some of the new staff in the latest issue of Letters from Camp Rehoboth. Um, we're very excited to have you here tonight and to remember the, the, the names and the lives and the people who are meaningful for us and to acknowledge um, what we've lost both this year and in the past. Um, and so, with that said, I'd like to hand things over to Reverend Diane Fisher. Thank you. Hello. Um, it's an honor to be here, as it always is. I think this is our sixth one, um, and so I'm just so thankful. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be sharing a reading from Reverend Aaron Miller, who is an MCC pastor, and it's called Every Note. Like a note in a song, we are each essential. A beat cannot be skipped without interrupting the song's rhythm and cadence. Would we say one note is wrong? unnecessary or has less value than another, when the song is so beautiful that it touches our hearts and compels us to sing along. Different since birth, the trans transgender experience has been at times difficult, isolating and even painful in a world that does not seek to understand. Arms did not reach for me. No band-aids were offered to protect my spirit, to heal my soul. I was not accepted as one of the boys, and I was definitely not a girl. I was a note in the wrong song. I cried out to God, why did you create me so differently? In the quiet of the sanctuary I had created, something stirred. A still, small voice whispered, your note in the song that I am singing. I answered, why then am I so different? And God said, you are a beautiful note that creates the harmony in my song, a song that you call humanity. Melody and harmony need each other to create something new and beautiful together. So play your notes with joy, my child. You are a part of a song that is not yet complete. Look and you will see hearts opening to this beautiful song. Some are even compelled to sing along. I ask that you have faith enough to trust the songwriter, for you are my and your note is essential and beautiful to me. Thank you all for coming. My name is Carpenter Brown, and I'm the founder of Training Blinds. Uh, and uh, originally, I founded this group right here in this room. And that's why this room is so important to me. Um, this room represents community. This room represents love. Um, we first organized the uh, trans talk right here in this room. And it was uh, Steve. Elkins, uh, Murray's partner, that helped us do that. And when we had things that went wrong at the high school, we all came to a Jump to Jesus meeting here, and we came together and, and we fought those problems that were happening at the high school. We formed a committee. Steve and I worked on that committee, um, and that committee is still going, and, and I have great hope for that committee uh, to make a lot of changes in Cape and Lopen. But th this room means a lot to me. Um, 
this room, I came here here on a in, a in a class called the Mastery, and that's where I found myself, right here in this room. Um, it was the Mastery that gave me the confidence to come out to be myself. It gave me the tools that I needed to find my love, to find the community that I needed, and. I'm taking those tools and I'm trying to give them to everybody else. Um, we've formed groups in Dover, Upper Chesapeake, uh, Virginia. We formed them in Easton, Seaford, or uh, Salisbury, and uh, right here in Rehoboth. Um, so we're, we're taking those skills out to other people. We're trying to give transgender people the confidence to come out of their closet, the confidence to come out of, of their hiding place and stand proudly in public. And that's our goal, is to make everybody proud of who they are. Um, but it's because of Stephen Murray that all of this happened. And I think uh, Murray has always been a friend to us. Um, I, I call Murray my friend. I, you know, I, I think he's a great person. He's got a warm heart. And this is all about love and community. So I think um, Murray's agreed to speak with us, and I think that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is love and community. And I have great hopes for what's going on at Camp Rehoboth right now. I have great hope for the future. There's been a lot of atrocities happening for the transgender community in the last year. This has been the most uh, anti-transgender state bills in the history of the United States have been issued this year. Uh, a lot of them have passed in a lot of states, and those states that pass them are based on ignorance. They're, they're based on uh, studies that aren't true. They're based on uh, people that don't understand us. And I think one thing that this room means is that you don't need to understand each other, okay? I can't understand, you know, what some people are going through, and they can't understand what I'm going through. But we can all come together here in a room and a community of love. So I'd like to introduce Murray Archibald. Thank you for being our friend, Murray. And off, so I can talk here, and I've gotten so old, I can't read anything without <laughs> it. So anyway, um, thank you, Kathy. When I first received your uh, lovely invitation to speak to you all tonight, she explained that the theme was love and community. And I thought, well, hmm, that sounds like it's right up my alley. Out of curiosity, I went to the Camp Public website and I searched my name and I searched the words love and community. And the result was, as I expected, it was a long list as both were and still are favorite themes of mine and appeared frequently in my writing throughout all of my years at Camp Rehoboth, decades actually. Um, as a child, my mother taught us the simple lesson, God is love. Her prayer for all of us, for all of life, was the equal, equally simple statement I'm surrounding you with little pink clouds. To her, little pink clouds were a vision of love, a vision of healing, a visual image to accompany her own beautiful philosophy and gentle nature. So tonight, my friends, I invite us to step with open arms into our time of remembrance, into a time of healing, and into an embrace that can only be found when we come together as family, as a community. Unique, diverse, beautiful, and altogether human. One of the great understandings that Steve and I realized over our years of leadership at Camp Rehoboth was the awareness that the community around us, well, around the whole organization was was far more diverse and compartmentalized than many of the subgroups of our LGBTQ community realized. 
I likened it to standing, you know, in the center of a pie and understanding that each slice of the pie was a different flavor. And sometimes the slice of pie on this side didn't have a whole lot of interaction with the pie with the slice on the other side. In truth, our beautiful queer community is as diverse as the greater population around us. They are us. We are them. We are all witness to the, to the divisions our culture creates to separate us, to define us, race, politics, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic status, age. The divides are endless and destructive to our humanity. In recent years, I've come to understand that much of life exists on a spectrum. And yet, our human nature seems to constantly seek only absolutes. You are this, we want to say. I am that. We are good. You are bad. Simple, easy, and wrong. As an artist and a designer, and as anyone can attest, I think, who's followed my work for years or listened to all of my Sundance themes for the last 30 years, I have always been a little bit obsessed with the rainbow because it perfectly symbolizes the natural order of diverse elements working together in precise harmony and equality, which is why I say life is a spectrum. When we see skin tones on a color wheel, and not as black or white, we see the beauty and the equality. When we see sexuality and identity on a spectrum, we are less likely to apply labels. When we understand the full spectrum of human emotion and experiences, we are more willing to accept diversity of opinion and belief. My dear husband, Steve, as many of you in this room will remember, passed away almost four years ago from a, a, after a, a brutal battle with a, a horribly aggressive lymphoma. His doctors and nurses were devastated they couldn't save him. Nothing they tried even slowed it down and the treatments grew progressively worse month by month. In the end, they were so terrible, we weren't sure what killed him, the disease or the treatment. But Steve never gave up, and he had a lot of help. After 30 years of working for the community, our great big extended family, our Rehoboth community embraced him, embraced both of us. The cards, the messages, the visits, the stories, and the words shared with us by the people of our community, they were pure love. And in the wake of his death, they carried me through the most painful period of my life. Over time, I'm happy to say that my grief turned to joy for the 40 years we had together. He still makes me laugh, and I hear his voice in all situations, sometimes just fussing at me for being too close to the edge, as he was fond of saying. Everyone who's lived in a long-term relationship knows that it takes work. The first rush of romantic love is never enough. It must be nurtured and cared for like a child. Some of you may remember the movie Love Story. The tagline for that tear jerker of a film was, love means never having to say you're sorry. That's bull. <laughs> love makes it easy to say you're sorry. And forgiveness is a constant and necessary part of all relationships.
And the same is true for our interactions with family and community. Both can be difficult. And guess what? The world is full of people we don't like. And you know what? That's okay. Because there is a love that sees beyond like. A deep love, an abiding love, an amazing love, a love that respects our humanity. A love that seeks truth and wisdom and peace. A love that celebrates diversity and strives for equality for all people. On our best days, we remember that kind of love. When Steve and I gathered our community together to create the foundation of what would become Camp for Hobus, our driving philosophy was a, a powerful belief that living an out and visible and positive presence in the community would allow us to be seen as neighbors, as friends, and as family. In that action, we sensed that barriers would begin to fall, the doors would open, and they did. The more involved Camp for Hobos became in the life and, and, and the organizations of our community, in the very fabric of our community, the better able we were to see one another neighbor to neighbor, to understand one another as human beings, to love one another because we recognized our shared goals and dreams of building a better community for all of us. In a midlife moment of awakening, I, I pinned these opening words to a piece I was writing in a small book of poetry I worked on for years. How is it that in one gigantic leap, I see the whole of the universe as my family, friend, and lover? That's what it takes, my friends when we really begin to see one another as family. We shatter the bitter divisions, the deeply ingrained prejudices, the long-held cultural beliefs that surround us like cages. Tonight, we come together to acknowledge the fear, the bias, and the violence aimed at transgender members of our community. Most of all, we come to stand as witnesses to the memory of those whose lives have been lost to that bias, to that fear, to that violence. We come to say out loud, we see you, we know you, we remember you. My mother had Alzheimer's. And in the last years of her life, she forgot who she was. She was tormented by delusions, paranoia, and pain. And though occasional fragments of memory flickered in her eyes from time to time, I, I, I doubt she contemplated those little pink clouds that all of her children remember so well. My mother passed away a few months after Steve died and following her wishes, made clear to us years before her mind disappeared. She was cremated and her ashes were scattered in the beautiful waters of Cane Creek Falls in the mountains of North Georgia, in a place she deeply loved. In the crisp autumn dawn and mountain dampness at the top of those falls, my brothers and sister and I were joined by other family members just as the first light of the new day began to filter down from the dark recesses of the mountains around us. And then, as if right on cue, the sky filled with little pink clouds, reflected in the water and the mist around us. And in that rosy light, my many painful years of that we remembered from my mother's Alzheimer's faded away. And she was again, a kind, sweet, creative, loving mother that we always knew her to be. Nothing could take away the pain of her final years, but 
somehow it placed them in proper perspective with the whole of her life. In that moment, we remembered our mother. So my friends, my pink cloud prayer for this evening is a simple one. Remember who you are. Love who you are. For in loving ourselves, we learn to love others. And we learn to open ourselves to family, to community, and to the world around us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Murray. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget uh, Steve's eulogy that the pastor talked about punching holes in the darkness. And I think that's what our group leaders do. And our group leader is going to tell you about some of those holes that they've been punching. Um, we're going to start with uh, Christiana McBride. And I think, uh, did Danny want to say something also? So, yeah. I want to... Why don't you come on up, Danny and, and Christiana, and, and pardon me. You want to speak at the end? Oh, okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Christiana McFly. I'm on the Salt Lake Trail Fire. Um, I guess Danny was going to come up earlier. He wanted to talk or not, but I guess not. Um. Basically, I was talk, I was going to talk a little bit about how I many you know people who came out and lived their truth and what happened to them. And I remember, matter of fact, I, Danny, do you have um a, a picture? What? London. I'm gonna show everybody a picture of this girl. Her name is London. London Barbie. Uh, she came out the same time that I did. And she was only 20 years old when she was killed. The sad thing about it is that, I think, I can, I'll let you know, I'll let you know, this girl was only 20 years old and she died living her truth. And so many people, just like the people you see here, died living their truth. And it's sad because so many, there's a lot of people in this world that don't understand us. We're having a human experience. We're just being us. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to exist. I'm a beautician. I go to work. I raise my kids. I have two kids here. Um, you know, I'm a widow, and I'm quite sure you heard this here before. You know, but I put my shoes on just like everybody else. And I live my life. And sadly, these, those are probably the same thing these people are doing. They were living their life, doing their thing, going to work, living with their parents, living by themselves, going to college, um, raising families, and their life was cut short just because maybe their boyfriend, somebody saw them on the street that just didn't like them who they are. It's the price that we pay to be us. It is definitely the price that we pay to be us. We, we do what we have to do, and it's just, sadly, that's what happens a lot of times. Um, oh, God. I was going to write a question on Bob's for the top of the head, says, but it pretty much is just, it's, the price you pay to be who, who you are. Um, oh. I'm going to tell you a little story with me that happened recently. I grew up in Hackensack, New Jersey. And, you know, my dad was very homophobic. And so was my brother. And I remember this was in, back in the 80s. I remember we was going somewhere, and I wanted to look nice. So I threw on a pair of lipstick and some blush for my aunt, my aunt Nini's um, makeup counter. Went downstairs, came outside in the front of the house, and said, hey, I'm ready to go. 
<clears throat> my mom, my dad, they, they freaked out. And they made me go back upstairs and wipe everything off. I remember talking about that recently with my mom. And my mom had no recollection of this, but my brother did. And he also remembers many times that my dad would see me whilst I walking around and he would say, you're walking like a faggot. And he threatened to whip my butt a couple of times. And when I came out to my mom on Christmas morning, I didn't realize this, but my brother actually he took the time to, um, he took the time to research and look things up like videos. He looked, he looked at videos, um, he read different articles. And I didn't realize this guy, this, this kid is very masculine, very homophobic. He, he just, he wasn't really accepting of me at first. And when I came out that night on February 20th, which was the yard of my wife passing, one of my friends, Morgan, said something about me coming out. And I guess just the way he said it, my brother was literally so pissed off that he was, he was actually going to go down to his house and beat him up for me. And I later asked him, why would you want to do that? He said, I don't want nobody effing with my little, my little sister, my little big sister, as he would call me. Now, fast forward a few years, sitting in the kitchen and my mom's house. We were talking about different things. I told my mom about how I felt why I needed to do what I had to do. And my brother stopped me. And he said, hold on. What pronouns do you go by? And I told him, that she, her. And what blew my mind, I was flabbergasted. He started saying, she, she. And I drove back home that night, going from exit 16 of New Jersey Turnpike all the way down to Delaware Memorial Bridge and back to Salisbury. I cracked two thirds of 120 miles of that turnpike, just thinking of what, what my brother said and how minuscule that was and how small that might have been. The mere fact that he used the pronoun, the proper pronoun, and gendered me properly, that made the world to me. And being validated as your authentic self means the world to people like me. Not everybody's going to understand that, but for somebody who's in my shoes, somebody who's in your shoes, your shoes, your shoes, your shoes, your shoes, your shoes. And I spoke them back. That makes a huge, huge difference. Even to this day, I, I would call my, my brother would call me out and he would talk to me and he would say, how long is this going? And we'd have the, the the nice conversation. Matter of fact, recently we had a long conversation. He wanted to see me. He's like, hey, I want to see my big sis. My big sis. And I was like, you know, I still, it still brings a tear to my eyes because I never thought in a million years that my family, my immediate family, would accept me for who I am. I remember as a kid trying to figure out who who I was, going through high school, middle school. I remember even in kindergarten playing Barbie dolls with in Mrs. Alice's class and being chastised I was playing Barbie dolls or jump rope when I was at Nellie Parker and 
Hackensack, New Jersey, or how I presented, which was very expensive, which I later found out that a lot of the girls didn't want to date me because I was very expensive, which is okay. I was married in 2005 to the love of my life. And she passed away February 20th of 2012. She never got to see me, really am, but I always know that she, she, she sees me, she sees me for who I am. And that's all I really cared about. I said, you know, I would have dreams. I don't know if these are dreams or not, but I would have dreams with which she would come and talk to me. And it was really weird because she would only talk to me in a bedroom setting. It was kind of like our pillow talk at night. And one night I had this, I guess, dream that she was talking in this bedroom. And she said, hey, I still love you for who you are. I still accept you for who you are. Live your life and do you. And that's all I needed to hear. That gave me the green light. Granted, I still have the green light, but I, it gave me the green light to just be me. And, and that's really what I'm trying to say is that whoever, whether you accept somebody for being yourself, you understand it or not, just know that they're having a human experience. And they are just being them. They're trying their best to be them. They're trying their best to be themselves. And all that I can say is just accept that person for who they are. Whether it's your first time coming to a, a, a trans event, a trans day of remembrance, just remember, just leave it here and say, look, if you don't understand this, it's okay. But just accept people for who they are. And think of this when you see somebody being misgendered. It's correct. I sometimes feel myself. I do it myself sometimes. But still, you see somebody out there, just stick up for that person because you don't know if that person is going to go home and harm themselves. You don't know if that person is like literally on your last leg. You don't know. You just don't know. That's all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Christiana, for doing such a great job. Salisbury Group meets the first Monday of every month um, at either at the Ward Museum or at Christina's or Christiana's house. Uh, you can just follow our website. Our next speaker uh, comes from Eastern Shore, uh, the, um, from Easton, the um, Mid Shore Trans Alliance, uh, Tina Jones. I haven't even said anything yet, and I'm going to fall. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I'm a late bloomer, I guess you'll say. I transitioned when I was 56 years old. Um, was caught in a closet that was chained shut because of beliefs of how I was raised, that you don't dare do something like that on the Eastern Shore of Maryland when I was born. You know, it took me having a brain tumor to realize that life was too short. I came out one month. I started the Eastern group the next month because there was nothing on the entire Eastern Shore of Maryland at that time that dealt with not just trans issues, but any LGBTQ issues. And as Christiana said, we do this out of love. We do this so that nobody else gets harmed. I'm going to tell you about three kids that are in my life. One is a 17-year-old young lady who was now a part of my family, became a part of my family last summer, 
and she was put out on the street by hers because she came out and then was accused of horrible things. And the child had a life full of trauma because she was being herself. I'm going to tell you about a 14-year-old child whose mother called me two Mondays ago to tell me that this child had attempted suicide the night before and wanted to know where they could find resources because they're so scarce around here. Then the very next day, I had another mother of another 14-year-old call me because her child was having suicidal ideations. Again, they're all reaching out. They're looking for love. They're looking for acceptance. The loss, these individuals made the ultimate sacrifice their lives. But so many people and so many young people are being targeted today simply because of who they are. And what we need is for all of you to come together with us and stop this cycle of hate to embrace one another as Murray says, to show your love one person at a time. That's all it has to be, one person at a time. And you don't have to be trans to show another trans person love. We love one another. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why this group exists in Easton. That's why we just started the Pride Center in Easton, because we need to stand up as Murray said, in our communities, I show people that it's okay and that we're just like everybody else. Thank you. We have our Dover group leader here. Is Carly here? No? Our, our Jeannie Neal from Virginia? Mikey, that means you're up next. All right. Mikey's with our Upper Chest Peak uh, Trans Violence Group. And I can't tell you how proud I am of this girl. She's one of our award recipients this year also. And it's just because of her dedication to education, to outreach, and to social support. So I'm really proud to introduce Mikey Schott. Hi everyone, um, as she said, my name is Mikey Schock. Um, I'm a 20 year old transgender woman and I'm an activist. I'm a trans individual, I'm a student. Um, I'm, I work in the medical field. Anyway, 48 people 48 human, 48 souls, individuals, children, parents, 48 transgender people who have been killed this year. It's not okay. And that's what all tonight is all about, is remembering the lives lost and speaking out against it. These individuals were killed just because they were trying to live. Not just live as who they are, but trying to get through the next day and not take their own lives themselves. That's what transition is about. That's what becoming who you are authentically is all about. So that you don't have to feel that dysphoria and that depression as hard and as bad as you do beforehand. I wanna say that these people will never be forgotten by me and I hope by any of you. And it's crazy to hear the number 48, but to actually see the amount of ornaments and names that are on this table it's dumbfounding. It's, it's atrocious. So tonight, we don't only remember them, we also speak out for them. 
we use this night and the platforms that we are given to continue to fight for our brothers, our sisters, and our siblings. May they have died not in vain, but so that we can continue to do the work and push for great things. There are so many individuals in this country and in the world that are kicked out of their house, that are beaten, that are murdered. And the thing is, is that most of society doesn't talk about it. And that's another thing that I wanted to bring up is these are 48 individuals that we know of. Think of how many more that aren't even included in the statistic because their family members don't understand who they were and they don't count them as trans individuals to put them in that category. Or just the trans individuals that are murdered and never found or never talked about. It's not okay. And it's something that needs to stop. As Kathy said, this is the leading year in um, trans victims of murder. And it's also the leading year in anti-transgender bills and laws. You think now that we're in 2021, it'd be different. So for 2022, I want us all to do as much as we can to keep it ever from getting to that number again. And I hope this is the most that we ever have to have again, and that we don't even come anywhere close to it. But to these individuals who are up and in peace, may we remember you, May we never forget you. May we continue to fight so that others don't have to end up in the same situation. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Carball, you're up next. Um, and I'd just like to take a minute to um, tell you a little bit about transvience and our relationship with uh, Safe Harbor, uh, United Church of Christ, and uh, Rehoboth MTC Church. We are an outreach program of Safe Harbor, and uh, we are a ministry program with the Rehoboth MTC Church. Both of these churches have taken us under their wing, and I'm so appreciative for what they do for us, for giving us meeting space, for giving us some support, and including us in their community. So it's all yours. Well, I would like to just lift us in a moment of prayer uh, that we might lift the heaviness of why we're here and preface the 48, our 48 siblings with just a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, one who is always present, always listening, always compassion, full of justice and mercy. These are our prayers on this day of remembrance. These are the prayers of our grief, that those who should be here are lost from the world, that lives of beauty and brightness were cut short, that difference is hated and honesty is despised, that our people are held to be of no account. Receive our grief, O God, and share our lament and console your people. These are the prayers of our anger, that those who should be here are lost to us, that those who do not understand turn to hate, 
that those who hate turn to violence, that those who should protect instead turn away, that those who do not hate still do not speak up. Receive our anger, O God, but make it transformative, a force for change. These are our prayers of our hope that those who should be here are safe in your arms, that their beauty and brightness lives on in the world, that those who do not understand learn to listen, and those that hate learn to love, that those who love speak out loud and make change. Receive our hope, God, Fulfill it through your power that you might create a new world. Amen. Yeah. Um, um, we should be a word to be talking and yeah. um, we can do um, our and I'll be out. Okay. Hi, um, this first one goes to um, a girl of mine I know personally. Um, she's been very active in the community. A lot of support. She's been there to a lot of the different groups. Um, and I also have to give this to her. When she came out, she had a lot of guts. Friends, it takes a lot of guts to be your authentic self. So I, I really got to Take my hat off to her, if I had a hat. Um, so this award is going to go to uh, Jack. Make, make, make a good banner, too. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Manara. A lot of stuff. I think she's done, yeah, she's on the banner. She's done a couple other things, too. Like this girl, i got to get to her. She's a rock star. And our next one goes to a girl who's been, um, she's, oh my God, she's awesome. Uh, she's also a rock star too. Um, we, I call my little rock star. Um, we're all hanging out, acting goofy, doing baby stuff together. Um, she's been helping a lot with that activism, education, and she also runs the Upper Chesapeake. Um, let's give it up for Mikey Shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, down here. Um. Our next award goes to a, a young activist and um, somebody I'm, I'm really proud of. Uh, he was a graduate of Indian River High School this year, and uh, Indian River decided that they were going to have the women dressed in gold and the boys dressed in blue, and you had to use your birth name, and it was your, the, uh, the colors that you were born or are assumed to be. Uh, and um, this next recipient stood up to the Indian River School Board, and I, I can't tell you how much how proud I am. Because of her complaints, we were able to get our foot into Indian River High School, we were able, or the Indian River School District. We were able to get them to at least talk to us about writing policy for transgender students, where they had they'd never even talked to us before. The, the last superintendent of Indian River said, "Well, we've only had one transgender person in the history of our of his tenure at Indian River School District, and we had a special bathroom for them." Well, we're going to change that. 
And anybody that objects to it will make sure that they have a special bathroom. Our next recipient is Alex Delis. Uh, Alex is attending the University of Delaware this year, and I'm so proud of Alex. Thank you so much. Okay, here we are. Okay. And okay, we're at the uh, point where we read the names. And um, I think, Dan, you wanted to, to say something a little bit? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, this, is, this is the time. Um, to be honest, it's not the first time he's done like public speaking, please. <clears throat> Often pondered, why is it the minor differences between us humans are the ones that divide us the most. Why is that the beautiful, and the most beautiful of our virtues, virtues for the most ugliest, fuel, fuel, fuel the ugliest of our acts? For if it is God who has made us the way we are, then it should be God himself who should be the one to judge us. Um, we are all here and have been here since the beginning of time, yet we, are, yet we are still treated as if we are strange, new, and really impostors. We've always, we've always suffered Yet, alas, we remain both strong and resilient against all odds. But I ask, who is it that has, who is it that has inflicted this upon us? Who is it that, oh my God, who, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. It was beautiful when I wrote it. Who is it that has, who is it that has inflicted this upon us? Who is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be really like poetic and emotional. Who is it that has inflicted this upon us? Who is it that, made, that has made it so that our community must endure so much suffering? Who decided that the way in which we, we are warranted, has warranted our, our deaths and destruction? God. Um, if, it, if it is God who has made us, made us different, then it should be embraced and cherished for it is God's will that we are the way in which we are. I'm angry. I'm angry that we bleed, bleed, bleed the same blood and breathe the same air that we are made to be different. I'm angry that my mom is the same person she was when she was a boy. Society views her as different, suddenly, suddenly different by virtue of her, of her transitioning. I'm angry that, they, that every day I fear for my mother's life. I'm angry that there are people around me, people through my past every day, who believe that my mother shouldn't be alive by virtue of who she is. I'm angry at how in our modern society we brag about how tolerant, free, and open-minded we are. However, instances like the ones in which we mourn today truly beg the question of if we're as truly open-minded, tolerant, and equal as we brag that we are. I'm angry that people be, are being killed for who they are. I'm angry that if we had a minute of silence for every trans person who has been killed in this year alone, that we'd be sitting here for nearly an hour. Do you believe the fight, fight to trans life? No. If you believe that the trans right to life, that the trans right to life is right, that we we trans people have fought, fought diligently, not just for the trans people, not just for trans people, but for the LGBTQ as a whole, then stand with us among brothers and sisters and family in our fight as we have stood alone in yours. Thank you and good night. Also, I'd like to ask you here too. With both of my kids, I got to give them a lot of credit because when I came out, so I remember when I came out to them, it was like 2016. It was the night of the um, Salisbury uh, tree lighting. When I told them, the first thing they said to me, this is what he told me, can we still do donuts in the parking lot? I said, we do it, but <laughs> well, can we go go-kart? Which we still do, we'll be about five. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> this is true, but I did. Um, but they both were really helpful when it came to doing different things. Like, like they have done a lot of things for like um, some of my banners from when I started my group. Um, they just been there. I remember uh, Danny also volunteered to help Mikey for the Chucky Pride. Um, 
just sitting at the booth, you know, just being, you know, they don't have to do that. But the mere fact that they are a big, a really a big important part of my life, and they've been really supportive, means a lot. I really wish there were more kids just like them. Amen. Um, well, we're, we're going to bring Randy Johnson up here, and uh, Randy's going to read the names. And we'd like to do this in an orderly fashion. We have 48 names up here, and we've probably got more names, unfortunately, than we have audience members. So some of you are welcome to do, go twice, but I think to keep it in order, we'll start with you, Murray, and go row by row and all the way to the back, and then we'll just do it all over again until we get all the names right. That's okay with everybody. Sound good? All right. Do you want me to wait for people to pick up the the tag, or you just want me to read? Well, as, as you come up, pick up the tag, and they, they can also read the name here. So you you call the name. Well, Murray, come on up, and you go ahead and call the name. I'll call. I'll call the name. <laughs> These are the, are the names of the forty eight people we know who were murdered this year for being trans. There's probably a lot more. This does not include the names of those who have died by suicide, which is a number far larger than this. But tonight we remember these 48 people who died in this country this year. Do you want me to just read them and have people come up and find yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good on you, sir. So the next person just comes up. I'll read your name and you find it. Somebody coming up? You need to keep the order, by the way. So somebody needs to be coming up, or we're going to be here all night. <laughs> Samuel Edmund Damien Valentine from Trulia Alto, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Bianca Muffin Bank from Atlanta, Georgia. When you look for that, the next name, Dominique Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Fifty bands from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Fifty bands, B A N D Z. My pronunciation could use some more. Well, you look for that. Next name is Alexis Timmy Icon Braxton from Miami, Florida. <laughs> I can read, and people can just pick up any old name if you want. Correct. Well, let's, let's just go pick up the name and read it. Okay. Okay? Let's, let's forget that. We'll just pick up the name and read it. Go ahead. We just, we're just going to go one by one. Pick up, pick up the name and go ahead and read it. Yep. Yep. Go ahead and read it. Next, pick up the name and read it. Let's for 50 bands. 50 bands. There you go. Ms. Coco. Taya Ashton. E.J. Boykin. Caitlin Evans. Rayana Harvey. Haven Bailey. Shai Vanderbilt. Jenna Franks. 
Oliver Ollie Taylor. Tiffany Thomas. Angel Naira. Kenny Bailion. Danica Danny Henson. Not only it's sweet. Here then. Desaya Monet. Brianna Hamilton. Sophia Vasquez. Joe Acker. Whispering Wind Bear Spirit. Marquisha Lawrence. Royal Poetical Stars. Jeffrey J.J. Bright. Zoella Zoe Rose Martinez. Jasmine Kennedy. Ricky Ocamaro. Mel Groves. Alexis Braxton. Harry Washington. Which is this? Harry Black. What is that one? Jonathan Dutton. Thomas Martin. Um, Donald Dominique Washes. Serenity Hallier. Hallier. Remy Fennell. Sierra Marie Lewis. Jesse Hart. Jaharia Diasco. Iris Santos. Here, LaFree Cartier. Um, China Carrillo. Jada Peterson. And the last one is Diamond Sanders. And I just want everyone to know that these were made by Salisbury Peace Flag so that they're not perfect. And I want everyone to realize that these were made with love by individual children, parents, trans, allies, and everyone alike who would come together to make these ornaments for everyone to be represented in the community. I love, 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 love Salisbury Peace Flag. You're doing a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Randy Dawson is going to lead us in uh, our closing prayer, and then uh, David Mariner will be sending us forth. Our closing prayer is adapted from a pair of prayer by Reuben Zell. Let's pray. God, full of mercy, bless the souls of all who are in our hearts on this transgender day of remembrance. We pray for the strength to carry on their legacy of vision, bravery, love, and authenticity. And as we remember them, we remember with them the thousands more who have taken their own lives. We pray for resolve to root out the injustice, ignorance, and cruelty that grow despair. And we pray, God, that all those who perpetrate hate and violence will speedily come to understand that your creation has many faces, many genders, many holy expressions. Blessed are they who have allowed their divine image to shine in the world. 
Blessed is God in whom no light is extinguished. Amen. Amen. So I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I want to thank um, Christiana for sharing her story about her loss. I know many of us have those names in our in our memory. For me, it's folks like Deonnie Jones and the Shane McQueen and um, other folks that I've lost in DC when I was working there. Um, I think we've recognize the folks on that table who died due to violence this year. But sometimes when we think about violence, we're thinking only about the physical violence. Um, not having access to medical care is violence. Not respecting someone for who they are is violence. Not being able to have a job and survive is violence. And being kicked out of your home is violence. And so the folks that I lost this year I lost Lovely Hicks, who used to work for me at the DC Center. And Lovely had challenges as a young person, had issues with her family as a young person, um, did what she needed to do to survive, um, and chose to go on hormones um, without, outside of medical supervision. And um, she thrived even in spite of all the challenges she faced as a child. But she ultimately passed away this year um, from kidney-related issues um, that was related to the street hormones she took as a kid. Um, Nona Menzel um, actually worked at Casa Ruby as a helping other trans folks with housing. Um, and she had a friend that she lost. and. She, um, she died um, from a drug overdose. Um, and so as much as we remember all of the people here, um, we remember too that it's our responsibility to create a world where those challenges don't exist for trans folks. It's our responsibility to create a world where we can have more amazing prize winners, more amazing young people like the folks that we've honored tonight, and fewer folks that just have to, you know, endure the challenges that they have to endure. So as we go out, we think about creating a world that is better, that is more optimistic, that has opportunities, and where we don't use, lose, lose anyone to hate in any form. Sending forth Go in peace, work together to create safe places, to work for justice, support and love one another. Go with open hearts and minds, God in peace. Thanks everyone. So quick, if anybody would like to stay and get, come up and have a group photo, we'd like to have a group photo. And there are some of you that were chosen to be interviewed by Jack. I'm going to put your, your last name, Buccioni. Um, you can go to the lobby, and um, he's going to interview you in the lobby. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to come on up, let's do a group photo. Oh, my phone's not working. Maybe I can get it on. Do we need this off? Everybody get up here. Everybody. But put together the No, I mean, you put together the Get on the stairs. I mean,